Qualifying matchup, best of five series. Home Story Cup 21 happens this next month. That is in July. Going to be very exciting, going to be very cool. Really looking forward to it. And uh, you should be as well. It's going to be a great time. I tell you that much already. As like I say, we dive into Hardwire here. We get this started. And in the top right-hand corner, we're going to begin with the red Terran player from the Shopify Rebellion. This is Bjorn. Knocked down to the lower bracket earlier today by Hero. I went through a couple Zergs pretty easily, Armani and Ragnarok, to get to this qualifying match. On the other side, from Team GP, the Blue Protoss player, Prince. Well, he made it to a qualifying match, was 1-0 up against DRG, but did lose out in the end. And here he is now, trying to qualify against Gun. Grab the Inu camera as we get our second game. Uh, second qualifying match, sorry, of the day. On the screen, Young Prince TVP starting up. When is Home Story Cup happening? It's a great question. End of July. It's pretty much the last weekend of July that doesn't overlap into August. Uh, the dates exactly are. Oh, no, I, I apologize. It's the 22nd, 23rd, 24th. So 21st to 24th of July. There's actually. But <laughs> the last weekend doesn't quite overlap into August. It actually ends on the 31st. So it's the second last weekend in July, that 21st to the 24th. And. Uh, yeah, should be fun, man. Been a long time since we had an offline Home Story Cup, or even longer since we had one in Krefeld. Obviously, the last one was offline, but was in the uh, Lost Islands. What was it called? The uh, the resort? The water park place? I can't remember what it was called, but it was there. So, uh, yeah. Orbital Command and a Reaper on the way up. As we get started in the early stages, he's going to drop down a factory in the main base, and that probe coming back around the right-hand side, going around the back of the mineral line. And obviously just scouting here early, trying to see what Bjorn's up to. Factory, before you expand, obviously Bjorn, a little bit safe, right? I mean, playing someone like Prince, he can be tricky, he can be very aggressive, so it shouldn't be too surprising to see him being a little bit cautious on the build order. I don't mind seeing that, I think that's absolutely fine. And, uh, yeah, that's the the current way that things are moving here, as we just have the factory on its way to finishing up soon. And we'll see what he does. He goes straight to a tech lab. Well, hopefully Prince doesn't drop down a Stargate, because Reactor Barracks, Tech Lab, Factory feels like a horrendous <laughs> combination of things to play against when you're playing Stargate, where you're, you know, going to have basically every unit the Terran makes is going to be great against you. Unless Bjorn doesn't make a Cyclone, it's going to be a Twilight Council on the side of Prince. And that's what I wanted to see. I think that's definitely the, the right call. It's definitely the right direction to take this in. So that's very cool. Stoker gets there to push that Reaper back away. And just going to be seeing the Robo Twilight continuing up. Prince bringing all of that in. And... Yeah, just a couple of uh, structures at the front. So with the Robo before the Twilight is done... One of two things, a Dark Shrine or usually Four Gate Blink. It's one of those two that typically comes out of it. Otherwise, you don't need the Robo and the Prism up as early as you get it here with that uh, Robo before Blink starts. So that's the uh, setup and cost right now. Gets online, we're just going to start with an observer. It is blink, it is going to be three additional gateways, so it is going to be the four gate blink, is one of the options we gave to you, as what it should be. And Reaper does nab himself a probe, so be unable to get rid of that. And honestly, with the opening, I'm wondering if four gate blink can really do much. Tank on the way. If Bjorn gets aggressive into this, then yeah, this can fall apart very quickly. But if Bjorn plays a bit defensive here and just sits back, in my eyes, he should have all the units he really ever needs to be able to deal with this, so... Let's, uh, let's see what his choice becomes, right? Because a lot of it is just down to what he decides to go for in the end. Tropical Islands. Yes, there we go. That was the name of the location of the last Home Story Cup. I'm just getting confused because this Home Story Cup is called Lost Island, right? And it's like, you know, that's the theme for this Home Story Cup. We're going to be stranded on a Lost Island or so. I just, I just, all of a sudden I was like, well, what was it called? Doesn't help because he didn't get to go. Or he does it. I didn't get to be there. 
I, I felt very bad watching the Home Story Cup stream because they were like, literally, they repeatedly said, literally everyone in StarCraft is here. And I was just there, like, watching on the stream, like, sad face. I'm not there. Sad. <laughs> no, this is a little bit unfortunate how things turned out for that one, but it's okay. It's in the past. I've gone over it. Very ready for this next Home Story Cup as we do have the... Crippa Stalker is going to make their way along. Bjorn is being defensive. He will lose the bunker low ground, though. He was very well positioned to deal with an attack on the main. And the natural, not quite so much. He sent the Cyclone across the map. He's killed five probes, and he's not done yet. So that's going to be notable damage dealt there from Bjorn. I think that'll make a big difference in this, because now you're going to have ten probes killed. It just means that Prince has to do so much more just to be in a viable position here, basically. So... He's trying to get rid of that uh, orbital. Oh, he blinks for the tanks, but while he gets the first one, the tank shots that follow are freaking deadly. They do so much damage. So much gets done there. I mean, you'll see this barracks lifting off and moving over to a tank lab. There's a handful of marines going to make their way out down onto the low ground there. So, going to move over there with that. We do grab this observer, remove some of the vision at least from Prince. A little bit tougher to maybe fully, you know, realize what exactly he wants to do and how he wants to do it. So, nice to uh, be able to do that. Talk us back along to the right-hand side. Looking for another opening, this time toward the main, maybe. That prism took some heavy damage before, and... Just to be careful, because it could absolutely uh, fall into a lot of trouble if you're not careful. We actually blink into the main. The Marines are going to stand here. It makes it difficult for the Stalkers to get in range of the Siege Tank. The Tank is just firing up a storm on those Stalkers. Oh, that blast was big on the low HP Stalkers as well. And as the Stalkers go deeper into this main base, this feels fully committed from Prince. Do or die. I feel like I've used that phrase quite a lot today, but this was truly get a lot done or die to the counterattack. And I think Gun. Well, I'd be surprised if he wasn't on the counterattack in the next few moments here, because that wasn't pretty. Good Jesus, Prince. Knows that this is not going to be good. Lost way too much. And that's going to be GG's. Bottom right-hand corner of Curious Minds. The man that's likely to enjoy this map the most out of our two players. It is our Red Terran player, Bjorn. Taking on the blue Protoss in the top left-hand corner from Team GP. Second qualifying match of the day for him. He had a good run in that upper bracket, but is it all going to be for nothing? It may be. Down one, looking to tie it up. It's Prince. So... Uh, again, number two. And by the way, just to uh, keep you up to date on the other side the, uh, of a part of the bracket, Bunny is down a map against Solo. Solo leads 1-0 against Bunny. The winner of that plays Zown in a qualifying match as well. Solo already lost to Zown once today in the winner's bracket, so absolutely worth noting that, that could be a, uh, a fun qualifying match as well. Again, that will happen on Roddy's stream. Uh, even when we wrap up this series, I don't think we're going to go diving into that one because we do have some sponsored content to do. Um, but we will see exactly what the timing of it all is. Maybe if it lines up, we can cast that best of five. Then do ask once the content. So we do have options, basically. We have options. We have choices. We'll uh, just see how it all pans out, guys. We'll see how our day plays. Okay, next uh, Home Story Cup qualifier after today will be on Friday. So we've got one day off, and then we're back with another Korean qualifier on Friday. I, not be, I might not be able to be here from the start for that one. Um... In fact, I'll definitely not be here from the start. I might catch it a little bit later on, like halfway through. Um, I might just grab the replays and cast it separately at a later point. Or I might just not catch, uh, cast it at all. So I'm not 100% sure what we're doing on Friday. I would like to try and go live for at least a while on Friday, though. It just depends what time I get back home. So I'll keep you guys up to date with that. They're going to get the probe. And that's going to be uh, continuing into the natural now. Once again, this rip again, a probe kill. Happened last time around as well. 
So already just beyond taking that little bit of an early lead. As you have our Twilight Council coming online, warp gates moving along nicely. Everything just pretty comfortable in these early stages. Looks like Adept is going to be staying away. Okay, it is about halfway done in the Twilight Council finishing, so Prince going to play Twilight again. This map, uh, Twilight, is a little bit more expected, right? Because you're playing a, you know, a map that's a little bit shorter. Uh, playing the Stargate can be very vulnerable, and some people do play it, but you've got to be very on point with making sure you know what the Terran is doing, preparing for things at the right time, because you get overwhelmed very quickly if he plays you know, heavy bio on a short map and you're playing the Stargate unit, so you've just got to be extremely careful about that. CC lifts off once again, beyond playing that high ground expansion, so just playing it safely, right? And a little bit of mystery as well, like, hey, how aggressive am I going to be? You can't really scout me very easily early on, so you don't really know. But, um, yeah, just going to drop that CC now down to the low ground. The wolf gates will be on the way through. I'm just going to drop to your tech lab. And... Yeah, Guns is happy to go into fairly quick bio play. Like, he's still going to have the factory support with the two Cyclones, but it's pretty much the fastest bio possible after that. And three racks instead of, like, two racks and a starport, he wants to get those numbers up and running. And I uh, would love to be able to be aggressive off the back of this. Is three gates this time for Prince. So already one gate down from what he played last time. Uh, but while he's one gate down, he still has the, you know, potential to be a little bit aggressive. It won't be as committed as last time. He should be able to get an expansion on the back of this more easily. And it won't be as pressured to kind of, you know, basically win the game on this attack. Which is obviously what kind of went wrong for him last time. He got into that kind of rough position. It definitely wasn't where he wanted to be. And then he had to try and figure it out from there. Stock's heading down the bottom. Here comes Prince's pressure then. See what we can do. Additional Stalkers will warp in and against him. Combat Shield plus one. Ball coming up right now from Bjorn. Not a bit ready just yet, so we'll see what the Stalkers can get up to. However, that said, we do have this um, scenario where everything is pretty far back in this main base. Like, nothing's immediately exposed. He pulled the SCVs to help out, though, just for the sheer size of the Stalker count. They actually kill nine Stalkers, uh, nine SCVs, sorry. So the Stalkers do pretty well for themselves, in all honesty. I mean, that's pretty pretty acceptable amounts of uh, damage done for the first blink. And no third just yet. This is three gates, right? I just had to double check. Again. I was like, man, why are we not building a third still? Feels like that's very late now. I actually did have it queued up right there, so... Third base is coming in. Wow, the prism didn't die. It's actually only the cyclone that had a lock onto it, and I actually thought it was uh, going to be a little bit uh, close. As you'll see, the stalkers in the center taking some damage. Let's see, with Bjorn having Stim, it should make pushing these attacks back that much easier from here on out. It should not be anywhere near as much of an issue from this point on. That's definitely the good news is, yep, as you kind of move in, you're pretty much forced to blink back immediately there, so not much gained. And in fact, we'll load up a group of Marines and pick them off on a bit of a journey. If Bion's forced to play defensive, it gives Prince all this room on the map to build into that Robo Bay and the charge. It's allowing him to say, hey, look, you know, you play defensive, I keep you held back, and I'm just going to attack the hell up. What Bion would love to do is if he could even just find a drop across the map, and he actually has one across the map right now, it's going to force Prince back. And, and Prince was playing so much on the idea of, hey, look, I'm, I'm doing a really good job of, you know, keeping you at home. He didn't have a respectable defense at home, so... Yeah, Bjorn actually doing exactly what I wanted him to do, dropping across the map at a perfect point in time. 
And that really, again, just abuses a little bit of what Prince was leaning on, which is, hey, I'm keeping you pinned in, I'm keeping you pinned back. Now Bjorn's going to go pushing, and Bjorn is set up just on three racks. We'll see if he builds a third CC behind this, or what exactly his plan might become. Stalker's blink over the side. We'll try for the Cyclone. Prism is going to die, so that's the end of this aggression. We'll lose the Cyclone at least, but I feel like the Cyclone's already paid its uh, dues. Definitely has been uh, valuable already. Has the buy of course around the left hand side. Just going to try and stem in. Stalker's immediately in some trouble and. Uh, Gonna have the Colossus coming through as well, trying to help out with this. The tanks getting in position. It's two extra barracks and then the extra bases behind this. So we are gonna move into that 3cc. You see Stalker's blinking in. One tank already gets picked up and saved. Got well done. Just gonna see the couple of Vikings actually gonna do well against the Colossus. The Stalker's too busy with the ground army initially. And that is gonna be the force of Bjorn going back along to the bottom side, so isn't going to be able to do too much there, Bjorn, but it is on a substantial supply lead. That's not, you know, uncommon for a Terran player against a Protoss, so isn't too crazy. As we just have the Sent Thumberlands, Prism, everything currently just on the way out. New Prism would be nice for Prince. Being able to get on the map and being aggressive again would be uh, really awesome, so it'd be nice to actually get that uh, up and rolling. As the CC will land down on the third. So yeah, CC onto the third base. Bjorn's economy now finally getting into a good spot. Uh, that said, actually, it's 58 to 58 workers. So worker-wise, Bjorn's actually in a great place. So yeah, worker-wise, Bjorn's economy is, is absolutely spot on. Exactly where it wants to be. As our Biofors goes stimming up the left-hand side. I'm just going to go chase down a few of those stalkers. Stalkers have to go stop and away for the moment as close I get in. A couple of Marines going down as well. Trying to run down this round, but force fields will drop. Yeah, this bio army continues to advance forward here just a little bit. Gonna get up towards the top, aiming for that pylon. A little counterattack of Zelds, and Zelds gonna go into the main base as well. It's actually gonna be a pretty notable uh, attack. Here from Prince. He's actually going to be able to get a lot of damage done. Maybe he puts the pressure on Bjorn to really find an opening across the map with his main force. He has got tanks in a good spot, but man, these odds are going to force him to be. Uh, do I want to say they're going to be forced to be all in? Uh, there's some potential for it. CVs are getting shredded at the moment, so. Yeah, Bjorn really needs to start, uh, I think, winning the game out over here. Disruptor doesn't do anything, though, and the Colossi are so exposed. Bjorn crushes that army, and that's not even close in the end. GG's to tie this up. 1-1. One, one. Uh, I'm already bonus on the loading screen. Can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait. In the top right corner of the map, our red Terran player is going to be the Shopify Rebellions Beyond, leading 2 to 0 in this series. Bottom left, our uh, blue Protoss is going to be Prince. Had such a cool run in the upper bracket and then was 1 0 up against DRG in the upper bracket qualifying match and just hasn't won a game since. Was undefeated in the upper bracket against. Classic and Ragnarok and like I say Once he's lost a map, he's not won a game since then so Not going great for the boy and we'll see if he can pull it back here Glitter and Ashes big map wouldn't typically say this kind of plays towards the the style that Prince likes to play but We'll see what he uh, gets up to See how he does And Bjorn, love to see him at home Story Cup. It would be fantastic to have him.
And again, that said, I was really kind of, you know, when Prince was one over against the OG, I was like, you know what, it'd be really cool to see Prince at Home Story Cup. Maybe get to know him a bit better, right? Learn more about him. Because he is one of those pro players that's kind of up and coming in the Korean scene. And, I mean, just an up and coming Korean player in general is something to always be excited about and to, you know, want to know more about because it's not every day we get newer players in Korea. Like I say, Prince is not super new. Like, he's been around for a long time, but... This level of success and this level of kind of, you know, making good plays and making good runs and qualifiers, that is a little bit new to, uh, to Prince, so. Yeah. I'm definitely cheering on him for him in that regard. I don't know. It's kind of crazy that we only have, uh, 12 invites. I mean, 12, 12 qualification spots, but of course, I mean, only 32 players in general. 12 EU, 12 Korea. Two more EU if Sereno and Serral got invited because of Katowice. And then obviously the uh, other regions get a few spots as well for this Home Story Cup. Because it's part of the ESL Pro Tour circuit this time around. Proper facility coming down early this time. Again, just before that Twilight Council is finishing or starting anything at least. Starport lifts off. Let's go over to the tech lab. What am I going to lift into the medevac? That's going to be our starting aggression here this time around. Getting that lined up, and like I said, heading down the bottom left here to start us off here. The early stages, so a little bit of movement to begin with. Otherwise, we'll begin to unload, and Prince is in position straight away to deal with this. Two extra gates means that this is indeed going to be our four-gate blink once again. So moving on into that uh, four-gate setup, looking to really apply the pressure. Baron's going to pop out, and... Uh And see, Bjorn probably just going to take that across the map for a little while here. And uh, try and get a little bit feisty with it. Try and make something happen. Next to Stalker's Warp in. Now, if the Raven across the map, there's obviously going to be some potential for counter damage at the very least. So that is a positive. So he's going to blink up, going to go straight on that stim upgrade. So that's going to be a delay for Bjorn. That's one thing he's going to have to try and uh, cope with from here on out. Going to lose the tech lab on the factory as well. He's talking actually putting some good value out this time around. Definitely having a lot more success than what we've seen previously. So that's very cool. That's going to be seen now at Prism. Hanging around and... Still keeping these stalkers in this base, so the stalkers still here. Still looking to do something. Oh, we killed the prism off. So no reinforcements available for the stalkers. That is actually pretty notable, at least. That is actually really, really nice. That's going to save you for now. In a situation that was starting to get a little bit ugly. This is going to turn out to be not so bad in the end. Factor gets a tech lab started, and... Just gets that rebuilt so we can continue tank reduction. Raven is still sat there waiting for its chance to really shine just north of the main base and uh, northwest of the third. So it is waiting. It's it's just waiting for the proper opportunity, waiting for the best chance to get in there and deal some damage. So 
Well, because, you know what, they can. Looks as though it's going to be the end of their aggression now. Finally pushed away properly. And Bjorn comes out of this. Not in a bad work account or anything. He will start a fourth and fifth racks, but he's already got a third to build it over on the low ground. So that's already on the way up, and that's already being uh, committed into here. Raven comes in, drops a couple of auto turrets down. And those auto turrets are going to try and work their way through these probes. And a couple of them so far, so doing okay. I'm just going to be seeing the Raven again push through the bottom side of the map. It's going to get shoved out of there for the moment. Well, as the Raven survives, you can use that later on, especially with Colossi coming on the field. We all know just how important the Colossi can be, so... That is good to see. He's going to have our stim pack about to finish up. I'm just going to see a couple of missile turrets still coming through. Medivac's producing plus one attack, and now finishing combat shield and stim all coming in. And with all those upgrades, maybe we'll see Bjorn start a push across the map. He's been pretty deadly with some of the larger pushes in this game, that's for sure. So, there's some potential to maybe see something along those lines again. Stalkers Colossi just joined up at the front. A fourth base goes down the far left-hand side. And a plus one attack upgrade. Already about halfway through. Plus one armor coming in as well. So High Templar continuing to produce. And away we go with all of that. Extra tank that's going to be finishing up there as well. Obviously, Bjorn gets out to his third CC, and from here, like I say, Prince hasn't really been too convinced in the later stages of these games. It has been very kind of Bjorn focused once the game gets to this kind of point, so let's see if that will be the case again. Yeah, just to explain the situation about kind of. Uh, Home Story Cup and EPT. Uh, basically, Home Story Cup and TSL partnered with ESL, the ESL Pro Tour to become partnered stops. So they were events with increased prize money. I believe over the three events, there's a hundred thousand dollars increase of prize money uh, going to these events that uh, wouldn't have been happened otherwise. And because of that, they also get increased EPT points, and so they are like considered like majors on the circuit rather than just a, an event that gives out EPT points like a King of Battles or an Asus ROG for example so it's a little bit different and obviously because of that it's a little bit more kind of sort of more serious thing of the EPT and hence these qualifiers being region locked and all of that sort of stuff which is obviously very new for Home Story Cup. That's a fifth base up on the far left hand side, and uh, that's something which Prince is maybe not going to hold on to for very long. Here comes Beyond to maybe say goodbye to that. Uh, so these stalkers do blink forward, jumping straight onto these tanks. A couple of Matrix is going down immediately, and this is going to get pushed away pretty quickly. These Zealots are going to come charging in as well. Well, I mean, the counterattack looks good, but Bjorn is already doing a lot of damage himself, so both sides are going to take some serious damage. Bjorn's losing a lot more workers initially, but Prince will lose his own workers soon. They're just hidden behind the base, so... You know, hidden behind the mineral line. He's actually not going to lose them, because Bjorn just wants to get in position on the next base along. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter right now if those probes are still alive, if you believe you're going to be able to keep on shutting down these locations. Gonna see a couple of Meredifacts gonna go in the main base. Try and pull Prince apart a little bit as well, right? Put a little bit more pressure out here. I like that plan as we are gonna move forward with these tanks. Didn't really get any good target firing right away because I don't think Bjorn was paying attention. He was looking elsewhere. They're dropping the main base. Gonna go after, I guess, a couple of pylons or so. I don't know what they're target firing just yet. As uh, Prince does start to lose some probes. I mean, it feels like this drop in the main did nothing, even though it was wide open to have success. I would say kind of surprised by the lack 
all the damage uh, that we managed to get out of that. That was a little unfortunate, I feel as though. Disruptor is about to finish up, and the few additional stalkers coming in. Vikings producing from Bjorn to plus two attack finishing now. Plus two armor is late though, so he forgot his plus two armor, but oh, oh, was it plus one attack only initially as well? That could be the case. Jones lost a lot of supply recently. That attack on the third got cleaned out. This drop in the main didn't really do enough, and obviously he did some serious damage across the map at the same time, and it felt like the damage he was taking was fine because he was in a great position too, but when his attack got cleaned up without doing much more than killing one single base, I think that's the moment in which Bjorn kind of got turned around in this series, and maybe this is going to be the start of something for Prince, because now this uh, third game looks like it might just end in Prince's favor. Obviously, that's a huge uh, potential W. Let's find out. Right, Templar Warp it in. Just going to see the Raven on the uh, medevac on the top side. Sorry, he's going to get a few more units here. Let's see if Bjorn can somehow find a somewhat miraculous hold in this situation doesn't really feel like he should be able to, but I suppose let's see. Units going up the left side, units going up the right, no. Just collecting together still, four friends might go there, but decides not to, just gonna play it a little bit more slowly still. A little bit slower. Prince gonna bring this force up this ramp and in we go to this high ground. You can be seeing a couple of ghosts dropping. Some EMPs initially trying to scare this off. Bjorn has had a chance to make a fair amount of units and a couple more EMPs going down. Scattering on this army. The tank helped to solidify that position. The disruptor shots landed short initially. And for the moment, Bjorn's actually gonna hold on to this, so not gonna slip away from Bjorn just yet. You have to imagine that Prince is going to be uh, hungry to maybe get more done. So Bjorn's actually moved onto the map, and now he's going to move up here. Now he's having to move up a ramp to defend his own base. That's never pretty. That's generally what we call being out of position. So, that said, he's getting Liberators up. They are a nice add. They will help to really lock down certain locations on the map, and that should go a long way in aiding you here. I'm going to see the prison getting sieged up. Some shots fire through. Sato are going to take some hits and just going to be seeing the Bioforce pressing in. The pylon in the front, that Nexus on the way up, will be denied. Keeps us to four bases each. I think the Prism is going to have a good time in the main base though right now. A couple of Zealots only, but yeah, there's nothing really nearby at all from Bjorn to really counteract that. So what are you going to do about it? Not really anything at all. Is a couple of Disruptor shots fire, not really doing much. Zealots will charge forward. Bioforce is going to be... Uh, well, getting rid of a few of those zealots as the medevacs continue to be chased away. And they do end up over the far right-hand side. We're going to have stalkers and archons just going to pick their way through. That set of rocks right there and open up this portion of the map a little bit and start pushing through the middle. Army just gathers up around the front, just going to be seeing the army of Bjorn, obviously, again. Able to hold throughout those fights really was critical. I, I really thought Prince was able to go sooner. And by not going sooner, I do think he's given his, uh, you know, I feel like he's given Bjorn more of a chance than he should have had. That said, Prince has had all the freedom in the world now, and he's gone 2-2 two, two upgrades just about to finish up. He's got three carriers on the way, so he is in a spot to, well... He's going to start to potentially win this uh, out just from the sheer power of his late game army. So that is one thing to note as well. Here comes Prince's army this time. I mean... Ooh, the disruptors! Oh my god! Bjorn getting caught on the ramp! Oh my god! 40 Terran supply just disappeared. Well, I was about to say, Bjorn has been getting some tech up, and I wonder if he can make something of a fight against those uh, carriers. But you know what? No, he can't. 
Not when that's how it starts out. That was brutal. Absolutely disgusting disruptor shots from Prince. And I mean, Gun might hold this off for a little bit, but I can't see him winning the game in this scenario. I mean, not after that. That was ridiculous. So much damage done. Jeez. Gun just kind of really struggling with the ramps and stuff this game, and oftentimes being kind of too far down a ramp and. All that kind of stuff has definitely been hurting him as you see Archon's coming through. The shot sure tries to land. Doesn't quite make it just yet as you pick off the sense tower here, backing away. So we see now we're uh Force is still going at each other. Prince just trying to create a situation where he can truly just attack up the ramp into his opponent. Oh, less but an end to this is generally going to be the plan, but so far has not been able to find that. More stuff is coming through. This might be the moment. This might be the time. It is looking good, isn't it, for uh, the shutdown here in this game. Twenty-four SCVs dead. Base is being forced to lift. You know, I said Glitter and Ashes doesn't really play to Prince's style, but Prince uh, really did a good job of saying, "Right, well, once I've got my lead, I'm gonna pull back and really advance my lead. Get these carriers up. Get those disruptor counts really high, and just make it something that was then very difficult to, to stop from happening." Some of the shots continue to come on through. Carries continue to fight. We do have 30 SCVs going down. The Bioforce coming forward, and carriers do recall away. So Prince just gets to reset the intercept account, gets to go again. So I was trying to push through the middle, it isn't exactly the prettiest of engagement positions, but with Bjorn on 100 supply only, it doesn't seem like there's going to be much love for him in this game anymore. And Prince is going to take a game three. So I'm stuck a little break as well, so we just dove into game number four of this best of five qualifying match for the Home Story Cup 21. Again, offline Home Story Cup this coming month in July. Pay travel thanks to Shopify, and they also the team, the Shopify Rebellion. Of this man in the bottom right corner of Berlingrad, Bjorn, our Red Terran. Carriers and all the rest of it to take game number three and to stay alive in this series. It is going to be Prince in the top left hand side, our blue Protoss player. Get all of this up and a rolling. Do, 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 do. Bow, 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 bow. See, just gonna come around, chase the probie a little bit, and do a little bit of damage. Max is on the way through, factory on the way up, and a Reaper about halfway done at the moment as well as we move through all of that right now. So, making some general kind of not really just kind of typical sort of setups at the moment. Nothing really too crazy. Oh, I just missed who won that game number two on the Roddy stream, actually. I was trying to see what the uh, score was, and they just came out of game, but I didn't actually see the, the windscreen or anything, so. All right, not the end of the world. As we get uh, going, reactor dropping down the barracks, and the factory coming through. See that probe gonna nibble the SCV. It starts to build up the expansion on the low ground. Uh, with that coming in, we uh, let's get set up here initially. I'm just gonna have a couple of Reapers on the way. So a little bit different from Bjorn going into the couple of Reapers early. Definitely a bit of a different approach on the reactor. And uh, that means he's gonna have quite a bit of pressure, like a good Reaper count and then some Hellions as well. 
definitely the chance to do quite a lot of damage across the map. You don't necessarily know what that is, even with the probe scout here, right? Gonna drop the robot facility down, the gateway coming up. And that wolf gate is not far from being done either, so it is gonna be actually a pretty comfortable blink opening this time. I think the first time we're gonna see a two gate opening from Prince instead of a three or four gate blink opening, so a very different approach, much more kinda chilled out and relaxed. There's these Reapers and the Hellion though coming through and can be find some serious damage here, losing the Hellion. Feels like it takes a lot of the danger away from this already. Let's go if you're going to be able to grab one of those Reapers. And the last Reaper is going to get out alive. Thank you so much, Wombo Time, for the 21 month resub on the Prime. Cheering on Beyond here. Try and make it into Home Story Cup. Let's see if he can. I can say 2 1 lead, so he has that map advantage. And playing Bill and Grad, nice map for Beyond as well. Now, last game really felt like the Stalkers did a little bit too much for um, for Prince, and that's the one time that Beyond's really kind of let that early game damage really get to him and really do maybe, like I say, a little bit too much, so it's definitely worth noting. This tank gonna move forward, Rack's gonna go up down on the tech lab and get established here. So now Bjorn actually starting to move forward a little bit, so trying to see what's going on. Marines, all tanks, making their way through, heading up to the top side of the map here and Maybe going to be able to get sieged up in the next few moments as well. I mean, let's see how far forward Bjorn gets. Uh, Mortal on the way out, I mean, he definitely realizes that he's going to need uh, some sort of extra defense here, Prince. So, recognizing that is definitely uh, a step in the right direction, no doubt about it. Green tank force making their way up through the top side. Well, tanks will end up sieging. So Beyond still with that army on the map, not able to, you know, really push it further forward, not really able to bring it home just yet either. Not looking ideal just yet. Little catch. Beyond is going to find the observer here, which is a good piece of information to, to get rid of pretty much straight away, right? You're just going to remove that vision. And now you can do a lot more stuff very freely on this map compared to what you would have been able to do before this. So that definitely goes a long way. Just going to be seeing the couple of Widow Mines up in production right now as well. It's a couple of mortals. They hang around on the left side, and the Medivacs will come around the top. Air Force will unload and just gonna move on through. There's gonna be some structures they can pick away at here. Pylon will be a good start of this and will take that down straight away. And the Stalkers in the center are gonna push back this little army, but yeah, they can't really hold their own for too long. It does kind of look as though this force of uh, Bjorn is getting some serious work done, although actually maybe expected to do even more here towards the end. of pylons uh, coming back through obviously denying the temple archives at least maybe de delays a storm if storm was to come up here but not sure if that was something that was kind of planned at all uh, otherwise i guess let's see if prince can do some damage on this prism so the prism can move in toward the main he had a few workers and so on i mean prince is already still ahead in workers beyond third cc is only just now on the way and it's not even in location or anything so his third is pretty late all things considered so that far, definitely not ideal for Bjorn. And maybe that puts him into some kind of trouble here. There's some uh, potential for sure. He's 
going to see Storm coming up, plus one armor coming up. They're buying force back into the main base. Ghost Academy is coming through. We are going to scan and grab a little something over there. Didn't see what exactly that was, but just uh, probably an observer, I guess, with the scan. Big drop from Bjorn to the top of the map. He's looking for well, a way to circumvent vision and then just get some damage done. That pylon's not ready yet, so it's not going to have the vision it needs to spot a drop like this. Oh, you can see it right now. Okay, it just has the vision needed. So Prince does see it, but does he respond? It doesn't seem like... It seems like, yeah, he saw it, but he didn't respond to the fact that he's seen it. So maybe he didn't notice it. Like, it was on his minimap, but he might not have actually realized it. Right. Temple Archives might go down, but actually, it's only in the middle from Bjorn's going to get chased away. Temple Archives already finished research on Storm, so maybe not the end of the world. There's Fortai Temple already on the map. We're going to storm the tanks here and storm the ramp, and... Wow, not holding back with any of these storms, just drop storms everywhere. Yeah, Bjorn's going to do damage across the map as well, and this does just become an immediate base trade. Let's see what's going to happen. Well, Storm moves in. Into the main base. One of those weird ones, right, where it might just come down to who can get a few extra units up here and there. It's important for Bjorn then to get rid of gateways, pylons and stuff as a, a bit of a priority, otherwise and fall into a lot of trouble very quickly. He's going to come down here, get rid of battery. Because typically, Protoss players can warp in and it'll build more than Terrans in situations like this, right? Because the Protoss will continue to have their production alive for longer, or at least a way to produce from their production. They can warp in elsewhere on the map so you just don't die instantly. Gun Supply is struggling a little bit. Looks like Prince is really looking to try and take us the whole distance here today. As the Bioforce comes in, gets a panel on the battery, that Nexus is in some trouble. So it's going to be going down. I mean, this actually might just be good enough for Prince in the base trade. He does have 24 probes. He is building a base on the right side of the map now. So, yep, he's getting a new Nexus up. So he's going to force Bjorn to attack into him. The army of Bjorn is not exactly incredible. The Wonder Mines are nice and the Ghost is nice, but only if they manage to get the right connections. Without the correct connections, yeah, it, it's so, you know, Bjorn's army is so kind of maybe, whereas I feel like Prince's army is just a given, and especially with the size advantage, it absolutely is a given. Bjorn is basically going for elimination at this point, I think, just trying to get rid of as many structures as he can. But uh, Prince is bringing his army across the map. I'm not sure what his goal is. Bjorn's going to land a couple of reactor or oh, barracks in the main and build reactors does have a base of his own on his way across, but obviously Prince has a fresh base that they're coming up for himself. Bjorn has it the other way around, so... Yeah, just tough to imagine that there's going to be enough uh, achievable here for Bjorn. His army just isn't really what it needs to be at the moment. This needs to be that much better. Again, battery is about halfway done. Another gateway will come down. And this is the issue. Now you've got the Protoss player mining. You have to be able to stop that. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. So, yeah, it becomes a little bit scary as Medivac's going to load up and just try and go elsewhere and try and create a fight in the open. I will say, of course, there are moments in this army composition of, uh... There are going to be, like, parts of this army composition which will not have a good time. You know, especially if you can fight this army somewhat split up or so. Doesn't happen, though. The Stalkers do get back to the rest of it. I'm just going to go start looking around and find the pylon and stuff, but... Again, none of that really matters. If at the end of the day you can't, uh kill this army and kill this base. Bjorn knows he has to take a fight. That's what he's setting up to do. He's got a couple of Vikings that might just want to land here. There's even a super battery, and that should do it for Prince. But the super battery in play, hard to imagine this doesn't go his way. Bjorn's doing a good job kiting backwards, though, really utilizing his Widow Mines well. Stalkers as they blink forward get targeted down a little bit as well. Good Prism Micro, though, from Prince, too. Oh, okay, I mean, Bjorn actually made it closer than I thought it was going to be. Uh, but obviously good enough for Prince, and that is 2-2 tied up.
We're going to game five. See what happens as we have got in the bottom left. It's looking also good for him. It was a 2-0 lead, and here we are now. It's all gone wrong. Our red tearing player in the Shopify Rebellion is Bjorn in the bottom left-hand corner. Top right side of the map, our blue Protoss player. This from Team GP is Prince. All right, here looking forward to Solo on the casting couch. Yeah, I, I do wonder, though. This is my only concern about Home Story Cup, and I'll say it out loud because I, I think it's a fair one. I do wonder, with this being a bit more of a serious event, and, you know, it's one of your chances... It's one of your five main chances of the year to get EPT points and so on. I do wonder a little bit if... Uh, Players will be a little bit less uh, likely to kind of get involved on the couch and stuff. And I was wondering this as well. What if our favorites don't qualify? Like, what if we're missing some of the people who are, like, mainstays on the couch? That would, uh, you know, can you imagine Solo just didn't qualify? That would be crazy. A home story cup without Solo? I mean, I'm sure they will get involved in stuff, but it's got to be, like, a little bit of a worry that the feel will be a little bit different, you know? I'm sure it's going to be. Honestly, I, I had this same feeling when they announced the, uh, the Tropical Islands thing, and I was like... Oh, I don't know if it's going to feel like Home Story Cup. Well, it freaking did, so I'm sure they'll, they'll be fine. They'll be okay. It might be that some of the players that are still in it take it a lot more seriously and don't necessarily uh, you know, get as involved as quickly and stuff uh, until they get knocked out and so on. But uh, obviously, once people are knocked out, there shouldn't be anything to hold them back or anything. Creeper Expand here for game number five. All comes down to this. Winner of this map is qualified for Home Story Cup. There are two more qualifiers. For the loser to try and take part in. But they might just get more difficult if the likes of Cure, Dark, Rogue, and Maru suddenly decide that they want to try and qualify. So it's not a given right now, is what I'm trying to say. There's no given in the fact that this is just going to be like, oh yeah, here's a bit of, uh, you know, you know, it's, it's not going to necessarily get easier, which is how it usually works, I guess, it qualifies. The best players qualify first and stuff. But yeah, this time around, it might just not be the case. So something to note. Something to note. Factory into the second racks. Bion is going to try and play a little bit bio kind of heavy here. And he is going to be up against the Stargate opening at the very least. So we'll see how that goes on the side of Prince. Hops up, but pylon block is there to turn it around and uh, stop the river from getting too much info right away. Have an oracle pop in, in the cyclone already on the way out. We'll see how aggressive Bjorn gets. I know Clem is someone who is very in love with the idea of just going straight across the map when you've got that, um, you know, when you've got that kind of uh, cyclone marine opening against an oracle play. And Ovacle into Phoenix especially, so we'll see if Bjorn wants to maybe uh, get aggressive with this. Does get a lock on, that's not going to get a kill, but it warns the Oracle off, and it does push it back for the moment. So it buys you a bit of time where this Oracle isn't going to be active and so on. That's typically very nice. Probo facility and two additional gateways in production. And it's just going to be seeing the stim pack turn up to be in about halfway done. Engineer Bay on the natural. Going to be finishing up. And just going to be having Starport production already starting up as well. So that's going to be Bjorn on his way up to all of this Bioforce. Just powerful army. Quick Bioforce, and we'll have good upgrades on it. And obviously, once the Medivac's out to support it, it's looking pretty reasonable. So, can I still set up here? Probabate is building, so we're getting a little bit of an insight as to 
what Prince kind of wants to do in this matchup as well. Uh, heading into just Phoenix Colossus pretty much straight away. Not a terrible idea, not a crazy idea. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome from the raids. As uh, everyone comes in from the other series. This is obviously the last map of the qualifier right now. Here in the uh, Home Story Cup Korean Qualifier. So hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. And uh, Prince and Bjorn. And Bjorn was up 2-0 to zero in case you weren't watching this series on a second screen or so. Bjorn was up 2-0. Really just looked very good. Didn't really look like Prince had much to show in this matchup. But yeah, a bit of blink aggression in Game 3. Set Prince up well. Played it out nicely. And just played a solid base trade in Game 4. Taking the lead and uh, closing it out. Leading us to this Game 5 with all the marbles on the line all at once. 5 force to the top. Looking for potential push into this 12 o'clock location so looking for something over there just gonna be seeing the medevacs in the center gonna get caught with a revelation straight away so that's a good shutdown at least from prince making sure that bjorn cannot get too crazy already on the map obviously the last thing you want is to let bjorn start splitting you up and moving you around all over the place that is uh, typically kind of disastrous did you get the pylon by the way so pylon will fall Oh, this group of units actually then turns into a little bit of a surround, but he doesn't commit for it. I feel like he could have had the Immortal. He turned around and maybe started chasing down the Phoenix. Now he's going to go for the Colossus. He will get it here. Doesn't lose too much. Now the other units come up from the low ground, so Bjorn's fight is going to start going very well for him. He's killing a lot of Phoenix. He's going to dive bomb into the natural expansion where he's going to find a lot of damage, including the Robo Facility. Oh, and Bjorn just runs himself through this army and is going to find himself Game 5 and the Qualification to the home story cup 21 which again happens next month well, an explosive finish here to wrap up the first of three korean qualifiers